Dr. Doom is back with another game of Doom, a game where no matter how good you are, you are doomed to fail. And that game is Mad for your Atari 2600, which is very purpley. So let's go ahead and take Mad, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. I wonder if that's Alfred E. Newman behind the controls. Mad was published by US Games, who was owned by Quaker Oats, and carries a copyright year of 1982. Despite the name, the game has nothing to do with Mad Magazine. It also has nothing to do with the organization that Inspector Gadget fought, but the artwork does have a Dr. Claw-like point of view, making me wonder if it helped inspire Dr. Claw, since Inspector Gadget did not come out until the following year. According to the manual, MAD stands for Missile Attack and Defense. Defend your future civilization's energy supply against waves of devious attack missiles. Your energy stations stand vulnerable. Use your ground-based photon cannon and pitch yourself against computer-controlled missiles, or let another player guide the missiles and do battle head-to-head. -head. Each wave of missiles becomes more aggressive and intense. Grab your controller and prepare for a furious battle. MAD is a single-screen action game for one or two players and only has one mode of difficulty. The game plays like a mix of Missile Command and Atlantis. You use the joystick to aim your photon cannon in the middle of the screen and press the button to fire. You can have two shots on screen at a time. When a flying object turns white, it usually indicates that it is about to dive, potentially taking out one of your six energy stations below. But in some waves, all the enemies are white to begin with. If a wave ends and all your stations are gone, the game is over. The two-player game is actually one of the more creative two-player approaches for a 2600 game. In MAD, players alternate turns either controlling the photon cannon or controlling the enemy missiles by moving a cursor on the enemy missile and pressing the button to make it dive. Hitting the photon cannon with the missile will keep it from firing for two seconds, and you can only score while you're operating the cannon. Scoring wise, for each missile shot down by your cannon in waves 1 to 6, you get 100 points, and that amount doubles after wave 6. Graphically speaking, I like the overall look of the game, including the different enemies and your colorful base, although when your cannon moves, it does look a bit strange. Sound and music wise, the sounds are good, but also fairly standard. However, I did like the small musical ditties that played in between waves and at the end of the game. Family friendly wise, this game would most likely earn an E for everyone rating if it was released today. At the time I researched on eBay, including shipping, most copies went unsold, however you could get a loose copy for $6. So what did I think of MAD? I enjoyed this game a lot more than I thought I would. I actually preferred aiming a cannon in MAD over the three cannon approach of the classic Atlantis, and the difficulty increases at a nice pace. It's also a game that I would like to try out the two player mode with in the future. However, I will say that it can be hard to hit objects, but overall this is a surprisingly solid game that should not be easily overlooked by 2600 fans. So where am I going to rank MAD? This one's going to be really close to another enjoyable game I've recently reviewed, and that game is Mogul Maniac at the 78 position. And while I enjoyed Mogul Maniac, I think I'd rather be mad than a maniac. So out of the 151 games I've now ranked on the Atari 2600, MAD is firing into the 78 position. MAD is worth a play if you come across a copy at a good price. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank all of my extraordinary Patreon supporters, including Steve. Thanks, Steve! If you appreciate the work I do and enjoy my videos, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter by signing up at patreon.com slash gamer starting at a single dollar a month. Not only will you help make videos like this possible, but you will also gain access to some exclusive content and have the ability to vote on future games I review. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and remember, don't get mad! Unless you find it for a good price, then you should think about getting mad.